episode 342 of the Too Thick Pod, your home for all things sports, cards, and levity. I am the Mac Daddy, Jeremy, joined by Mac Daddy Jr., Manny, and Mrs. Mac Daddy, Courtney. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Too Thick fam? We had a hell of a show that we went to. Um, We put in some work, you know? We came back a little happier than what uh, going there. We almost died. Courtney got stuck like 30 times trying to get there. It was so um, many times. Jeremy, Jeremy and I were in a bl- like mid blizzard. Um, it was it was it was worth it though. We'll say that. I even p- picked up a Luca auto. We'll get into that. But we went to Ship Shawana this weekend. Did trade night. Trade night lost power. But what does everyone say? The hobby's alive. The that, shit, that shit was alive. Go on. There was no denying that the hobby is alive based on the absolute insanity of people showing up to that show in probably what, like, I'm what, 38 years old, and that was top five. Top five for me, worst driving conditions I have ever driven in in my life. And maybe even top two. I was trying to think, I was like, as I was like fearing for my life, I was like, have I ever driven through anything this bad before? And I can't honestly remember ever driving through anything that bad. And yet I did it. And so did almost 300 other people to go to trade night, not even the show, trade night. So if anybody doesn't respect Ship Shawana as like a huge important show in the Midwest, you are missing out <laughs> because it is. I'm a little, I'm a little confused though. And I'm a little upset, and we're going to get off the rails here for a second. But um, it was my understanding, Courtney, you were 26. So I think you and I are going to have to have a very uncomfortable conversation. If you want to have a really uncomfortable conversation, you need to decide if you really want to say that we have a 16-year-old daughter and I was 10. Yeah, come on, Jerry, what's your response? I didn't hear anything Courtney said. Her internet must have cut out. Yeah, Get I bet. Internet, you bum. <laughs> you should pay for better internet. This is your house. <laughs> All right. So can we can we can we like just set this up? Because I think everything that you had to navigate to get to said show makes it that much more of an incredible experience. And also makes for a little bit of a fun story. So I will start that day as I was in North Carolina flying back to Detroit. The entire plan was for Courtney to pick me up, get home change grab some stuff and hit the road that morning my trusty delta app alerted me and said hey you better get the hell up out of dodge or you might not be going anywhere at which i panicked and i looked and i was concerned about the storms coming in matthew if you want to go ahead and log off uh you can go ahead and listen to this on <laughs> podcast form bud <laughs> let's go so anyway court was riding with the girls I had the boy, and then I was going to go over and pick up our son, Manny. As we're driving, watching the radar, Courtney calls to ask me where I'm at. And I said, I'm driving through the storm. This sucks. Courtney goes, it is beautiful by me. Not an issue with the road. To which five, ten minutes later, she called, and she's like, I take that back. I spoke it into existence. This is going to be a miserable drive. Jeremy went due south, and then he went west, and I just started heading west right away because he was going to pick you up and so my I was like further north than him for a little longer and it wasn't bad where I was and then as soon as I started like turning to head like south towards Indiana all all hell broke loose that is correct so we, we grab Manuel we get him buckled in his little safety seat in the yep. back thank you thank you know you. what I mean you get him a sippy cup you put on the headphones and then you get Toy Story 3 going and he's he's a happy camper my we, start, we start driving, and what's normally like three, three fifteen, three and a half ish. As you're driving, the time that you're going to arrive is getting longer and longer and further and further out. Due to, I mean, it, it was blizzarding all over our face. When I left, my GPS said that I would arrive at four at uh, five forty five, and I did not end up arriving until seven forty five. <laughs> So if that's any indication of how bad the roads were, it added two entire hours to my drive. 
Yeah, it was the one time I was truly thankful for four-wheel drive. No issue for me, but everybody around me was either going into ditch, turning into roads that weren't there, doing spinneroonies and donuts. Uh, but yeah, as we were getting close, closer, and there was flashes into the sky, green flashes. There was what they- wind. We were like in a snow globe. What were they called? Snow lightning? Snow lightning for the boy. Not a proud parent moment there, but I digress. So I had Manny check. And now when you get into Shipshawana, there's nothing. There's Mennonites and there's Mennonites. That is it. There is no Starbucks. There is no gas stations. There is nothing. So if you're screwed. It's also a dry county. Well, I mean, we're... We were driving there, Courtney. We weren't already part. I meant like afterwards. Oh, okay. Because I could have used several drinks after that drive. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, to, to cut a long, long story short, we check on Instagram and there is no power. There is no power at the trade night. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. So, so no here's lightning is real, but Manny's it wasn't no lightning. Manny's the electrical engineer. And so I'm like trying to get the breakdown from him and he's just stammering. And he's Yeah, like, right. I got it right. I literally told you within two seconds what it was. There are transformers blowing up. The reflection of the snow was making it green throughout the sky. And you had Steven in the back saying, UFO, snow light. <laughs> Look at the green light. And I was like, calm down, Steven. I appreciate you bringing this into it. This is one of my favorite things to do when people just kind of like wave their hands for no damn reason, like it means something. So anyway, I thought, well, what the hell's the point of going to trade night if there is no power? And I'm always the one that's, let's find a solution. I am not the one that lets BS get in the way. And then Courtney's like, no, we're going. We're going. So you pull up to the parking lot. And now, mind you, it's like six to eight inches, 10 inches. I don't know. 24 men inches. Ma- is it men math or woman math? As far men, as uh, men math was 30, 33 feet. 33 feet of snow. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, cars were parked everywhere. I mean, there was no, it was like you threw a box. Parked of- or stuck? Because I watched people just be like stuck in the lot. Both. Both. <laughs> Both. But I was like such a G. I just left my car running the entire trade night. So did I. I also did. Yeah. So I did not have four wheel drive. I was driving a minivan. And so it was, if you were to go on social, you would see there was a tremendous amount of people who did not go because the roads were so terrible. The weather was so awful. Over th- almost 300 people at trade night in a blizzard. Did yep. you see the picture that um, Brad posted of everyone doing trades in the dark with their flashlights from their phones? It was such an epic picture. I'll have to, I'm going to share that on on Too Thick and Reckless because it was the cool. It was so epic and so, um, I don't know, just like a definition of like the crowd that goes to that show. Yeah. Well, Jeremy and I, when we saw the lights were out, we instantly thought we're not putting our cards out. We have like thousands of dollar cards, and imagine the lights going off and just someone could easily just yoink your cards because they're just sitting on tables. So you could tell where Jeremy and I kind of grew up. We both looked at each other and we're like, nope, <laughs> we're good. Let's go to the hotel. Yeah. So now here's the kicker. We get in. I got a PSA order to pick up. Courtney goes to pick it up. And unbeknownst to me, we had an SGC order pop as well. Shout out to TNT for the gem on the mic trout out of 10. That is a beautiful day. So we're pricing cards. Not even 45 minutes into me being there. We had already done more in sales than we did like our last card show. The whole show. And we did really well at the last show. Mm-hmm. La- the last show we left in Lansing, we're like, this is the best show we've ever had. And then we went to Ship Show on a trade night. We're like, oh, trade night was the best show we've ever had. <laughs> Money was flowing. People were buying, selling, trading. The vibe was awesome. And it was like one of those things still as an adult, when you put like just globs of cash in front of me, that night when I finally got back to the hotel room, I had the table up and I was just like, I couldn't fit it and fold it where I started folding money and putting it in team bags and stuffing it. Imagine if we got pulled over. Imagine if we got pulled over and he pulls out the team. There's a team bag just full of wad of money and a Mexican in the car with him. We are definitely, (laughs) we're going down. We're going down. You have wads of cash, a small teenage boy and a Mexican. Yeah, (laughs) this is not good. Not good for Jeremy. It's not a good thing. Also, I do want to say, Don. It is like hands made tail. Only, I don't know. I, I want to bring this up because these Florida people are trying to look like crap, but we are a different breed up here. We don't, we don't, I mean, if it's a, 
one inch of snow, their their whole state shut down. We drive through feet of snow. So I don't want to hear. We're built different up yeah, here. We're, we're built different up here. I yep. was talking to I was talking to Sarah Layton actually the other day and about the Tops convention and she's like it was freezing there. I'm like in Arizona. She's like yeah, I was like 40. I'm like yeah. 40. That's shorts and tank top leather, my friend. <laughs> Dude, that's like when we went to Layton Sports Cards and it was like 65 and 70 and we were in like shorts I was, and t-shirts. I was wearing a, dress, and a sundress. <laughs> and they're like it's so damn cold. <laughs> Lane was like shivering and wearing a hoodie. I'm like get out of here, you guys. Come on. TV in the heat. No, we would turn like Brandon and get all lobster like. Yeah, and shout out to Don. He's probably live at the casino right now. Rolling you know, dice. Really, really spending that taxpayer that's dollar. Right. Shout out to him. That's my guy. So back to the show. Or back to trade night, because that's where we're at. Uh, it was so backing up a little further, my mom and dad usually keep the girls when we have to go to Shipshawana just because they're four and five. They're too little to go to a show like that. And we're there all day. And it's like it's work. You know, it's not like walk the show and then go home. It's, you know, there's nothing there for them short of like ripping a few packs. And then they're like, OK, I'm, I'm ready to leave, you know. So unfortunately, my dad wasn't feeling well, so my parents couldn't keep the girls, so we ended up having to bring them. So I'm driving, you know, with Amelia, the two little girls in the back through like death storm, thinking to myself that I am quite possibly the world's worst mother. (laughs) Like, who does this? (laughs) Um, And I had tricked myself because all of the weather reports said that Michigan was going to get hit and Indiana was going to be fine. So when I was driving and I'd been driving for like two hours and there hadn't been any snow, I'm like, oh, I'm going to miss the storm. Like I'm going to make it there. I'm going to miss the storm. And then all of a sudden I looked down and I'm too far towards it to like turn around and go home. So I'm like, I'm just going to go. But my, I just watch everything go up. And Indiana doesn't believe in snow plows. They don't believe in street lights. They don't believe in salt. Um, but they do believe in horses and buggies being out in a blizzard where you can't see on the side of the road, just, uh, you know, being or in the if, way. <laughs> we, we, we talk about us being di- built different than the Floridians. Yeah. The Mennonites, that was a beautiful day for Chorin, as far as I'm concerned. They were out there, man. They were out there in the blizzard in their horses in carriages. I'm like, I would you can't miss me with that. I would not be out in a carriage in a blizzard. So we get to the show. And it was Kai and Lala's first time going to Shipshawana. And they went to trade night. And let me tell you, they had an absolute blast. They loved it. Kaya told me this was so much fun. She was super into it. She bought wrestling cards. She wanted wrestling cards. She got Pokemon. It was, it was like one of those like moments where you know that this is going to be like a turning point And they maybe are like next generation of card collectors in the family. <laughs> You got to, I do want to, those horses, shout out to those horses, man. The horses were putting in work. You know, those horses were putting in, we got. I was so like, mad that they had them parked outside. You park a horse? <laughs> I mean, yeah. They were parked outside, just like standing in the snow. And it was like driving. So she's like, this is mean. I'm like, these people have puppy mills. They don't care about their horses. No, they, they were passing Jeremy. You know how pissed Jeremy got when he got passed by an Amish person? <laughs> He was not not excited, and then he was laughing because they they don't have power ever. So they're they like, do, though. they do like they do like lamp light. They have like gas, like really extensive gas lighting in their houses." Um, after we started going to Shipshawana, I got like deeply in um like Amish and Mennonite TikTok, and I've learned a lot about them. <laughs> so, they have TikTok. The Amish, so. the Amish wars. No, is that a thing? It's like a, it's, it's, uh, it's so uh, they say it was real. It's not real, I don't think, but it was like a war on the Amish. Like they're, you know, the mafia of Amish were fighting with each other. Oh, no, I'm gonna have to yeah. watch that. I'm very intrigued with the whole thing. I find it yeah. very interesting. Oh, yeah. I, I, I asked Jeremy on the way there, I said, when's if Courtney never shaved her armpits like the Amish people do? And he, his face just went, ooh. <laughs> Lots of people don't shave their armpits. That's sexist. You don't have to. Oh, I do. I shave mine. <laughs> all right. We're all like completely off track. Me and Manny are just like fucking spinning. I know. Jeremy's like, I'm trying to talk about my trade night. Breaking Amish is a good show. See? Don't you? <laughs> uh, all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So back to trade night. Jeremy, yeah, you Jeremy. were doing, Jeremy was doing some deals at trade yep. night. Well, no, actually, he wasn't doing deals. He posted up and was just like, 
mad comping and pricing cards. Like he had a computer set up at Trade Night. He had his mat. He had all of his cards. He got like loads of cards back from TNT. So he's like comping those out. He's like Steven's team bagging everything. So we're pricing cards. We're team bagging. We are doing deals. It was if we were churning inventory. It was crazy. Let, let me tell you something though. Wh whether it's Hail Mary, uh, Matthew Person, Breaking Wax, Ajax, any of these people that jump in our live, they absolutely made an uncomfortable situation for me just because I assume everybody has a sense of humor. So as people were walking up to my table, I was busting everyone's balls. It's been a long week. I had been on the road. I just flew in from North Carolina, you know, and like, I'm not a good sleeper. So I had gone like four days with like three hours of sleep, so like 12 hours of sleep total. And so I was just kind of like talking smack to people. And unfortunately I made a couple, I, I know I made at least one person uncomfortable and I, I kind of regret it. I mean, I kind of don't, but I kind of do because it's never my intent to make somebody feel uncomfortable. And it came from a place of, of pureness, but um, yeah. You're a true yeah. dickhead. That's all I'm gonna say. Because he you, is a dickhead. I told yeah. him, like, as he's like saying this, I'm like apologizing to the person. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm like, you were gonna buy cards from us, but my husband's an asshole, so now you're gonna leave. And like, he's like, no, no, everything's fine. And then he fucking ran away, and we never saw him for the rest never of the show. Saw him again. And I was like, you made him very uncomfortable. <laughs> so. <laughs> So if anyone out there, Jeremy, ever, he only teases the ones he loves. What is that? Like Jeffrey Ross, we roast the ones we love, right? But so, I didn't even roast him. No, I know. It was like on a scale of one to 10, it was like 0.1. For you, maybe, but for other people's perception. Of oh, well then, you know, he's soft, man. No. Anyway. Hey, hey enough. Okay. Anyway, I wasn't, I wasn't whatever, but it made me feel bad. Then I was in my feelings the rest of the night because I'm not out here trying to make somebody feel uncomfortable or awkward. You stop now, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I was oh. because earlier that day, like myself, Manny, Vadim, Don were all alive and we were all just like, kind of like, I was in the mood where everybody was shooting the breeze. And then all the thickelos are going to my head because they're coming up, talking to me, telling like, Hey, we 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 played you screaming cocaine on the shop on repeat. Someone hours. just walked up to our table. We have to 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 like paint a picture. We do the children's scavenger hunt, and this man walks up to our table and just yells cocaine like really loud. And I'm like, bear, cocaine bear, the movie. Cocaine yeah, but bear. we dapped it up. We we dapped it up, and then to let everybody know that we were talking about a movie, not the A1 Yola. So anyway, back to trade night. Trade night wraps up. We go back to the hotel and we do trade night after hours where we yeah. always, we rip wax. Uh, we have drinks. And pack, it's slowly, pack the stuff. yeah, package that stuff. And it's slowly getting bigger and bigger. And more people are learning that if you go for a 10 minute drive, you can find a Hilton property, which in my humble opinion, greater sign than that Amish living. Mm -hmm. Well, there's like a McDonald's and a Taco Bell, which is, you know. I, I do. I want to say that trade night though was probably better for me than the actual show, um, because I got one of my biggest cards and I got I was able to trade out of a good card. Um, shout out Brett, but there was a lot of soccer, you know, soccer, um, That's so soccer dealers there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is true. Ajax used to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they also gave me a jersey that said me ho, but it was spelled M E H O. Um, but yeah, so but yeah, we there's a lot of soccer dealers there. Um, I always struggled at selling soccer in the Michigan um area. So we go down there, I bring all my soccer cards. Brett shout, like I said, shout out him, had some had a Holland refractor rookie. Here it is right here. Um Damn, you had that ready to go. Oh, I did. I was pumped. He's super you excited to show it off. I was. I was. Um, I traded an Mbappe um, match game, match worn pop one card. Uh, out, it was a numbered out of 99 for this. I also got two other cards and some cash on top of it. So that alone, I could have just slept in um, the following day, but I had to help Jeremy and Courtney out with the show. Uh, but yeah, so I just want to say if there is a trade night, sometimes try to make it there. it's a lot it's a lot easier to get deals done i think in my opinion 
I'm telling you, I was always against trade night until I had my first my first taste. And I absolutely love an active trade night, especially like the one in Shipshawana because it's opened up. There's plenty of space. There's tables for everybody. You're not on a dirty casino floor in Atlantic City. It is so well done. There's typically a food truck, beverage. Like, you know, Brad and the whole Bees crew does an incredible job putting that thing on. So I always tell anybody, yeah, you have to come for the show, but you have to be there for trade night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, um, Dennis last week was, he had a good point of how people travel in to go to Shipshawana because like, like we've been alluding to, we haven't really outright said it, but we've been alluding to the fact that it's like mostly Amish people there and there's not a lot and everything closes, everything closes by like eight o'clock. There's nothing, even on like a Friday and Saturday night, there's nothing to do. So it really forces people to engage in the card stuff like we'll bring I bring food and drinks to the hotel afterwards so that we can have like another like trade night after have a few drinks have something to eat because there's nothing out there so you're really like your whole focus the entire there's no entertainment you're not like oh we'll go to the card show and then we'll go out to dinner and and then we'll go to the bar we'll go to the casino it's not like that you go to ship shawana and it is like a fully immersive experience of a card weekend Mm-hmm. It, it's getting bigger too. that trade night at the hotel at first it was just a, like us with gene and his son they show um, up the the amish the men are they amish or mennonites i'm not sure but they come to the show they wander the show they look at stuff so mm-hmm. i don't know if they collect it necessarily but they are they do participate i think that's neat yeah yeah so i want to just like the after the trade night was cool as well highlights of that real quick is courtney opened her disney box I opened two hobby boxes of soccer, pulled nothing. Guy next to me, my man, speak of the devil. We were just going to talk Hughes about you. Brings one blaster, comes Reach 40 minutes blast. late after eating microwave cheeseburgers out of his room. I just said <laughs> shout out Brett for the card. Yep. So. And then comes down and decides to pull a super fractor out of a damn blaster. Meanwhile, there's a million rappers in front of us and we couldn't pull ish. A one of one Weston McKinney super factor. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So we, he wanted to keep it PG on his IG story, and you hear in the background Courtney saying that. <laughs> that is that, I mean that's true emotion. What's up, like, champs? That, like, and so Brett is the OG of the after hours trade night in Ship Shawana. Brett's a day one. And so we've we've gotten to know him and we look forward to seeing him, you know, approximately four times a year. Have a couple of drinks. Um, you know, this time he was wounded because he went to war with animals. He tried to play human cocaine bear. Yeah, uh, he was like having a, he was like dog fighting. No. <laughs> <laughs> he was ripping packs with one hand. The other one was all bandaged up. Like, and my yeah. man pulled a super fractor out of Merlin. Yeah. Unbelievable. Merlin. Retail. Merlin blaster. A blaster pack. <laughs> And, the, and Brett's so nice that he left two boxes. Imagine leaving the box that had the Weston Super Fractor yeah. in it. Yeah, well, that, that, that's karma. He had four blasters when he stopped at the store, and he yeah. put two of them back so some of the kids could get it. Card karma's real. Now those kids aren't going to get any hits, though. So feel maybe bad for them. Maybe, maybe those were like – maybe that was like a fire case where you're going to get a ton of cool stuff. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I enjoyed it. Courtney, shout out. You talked about your Disney. Look what just came in today. So I got I got another box today. I got um, seven more boxes showing up in my house. Seven. I'm, I'm a little nervous to open this because this is the same case that Bro Namath's cards came from. <laughs> I got time to play. Nice. <laughs> this is the same case as Bro Namath, and you saw what happened to his hits. So I'm a little nervous, but I'm going to open it with my daughter. So oh. she loves it. It's worth it. All right. So it's the morning of the show. And I was beautiful, so crabby that And day. the beautiful thing was, well, not the beautiful thing was, so due to all the power being out everywhere, I didn't make the hour-long trek to go get Starbucks. So Courtney and myself were sitting downstairs, and she's like, where is Manny and Steven? Where are they? And so Manny came down, and Courtney went straight, mom, <laughs> badass, get the hell out of my way mode. Now, for anybody listening, Courtney is not a morning person. Mm-hmm. Courtney is the kind of person that hits her stride at, like, 8 p.m. <laughs> 8 p.m. until like three in the morning. That's that's prime Courtney hours. Mm-hmm. 
I got down there at six o'clock and Courtney was awake, ready to kick this day in the ass. And obviously she had spent, you know, several months planning the scavenger hunt. You know, she's got the angst and the jitters to ensure that it goes off. And so just one quick story. Manny came over. He's like, I'm ready to go. And she said, Manny, go eat. And he's like, no, I'm fine. She's like, I am not going to sit and listen to you bitch and complain that you're hungry or that your sugar's low. I have a show to put on to make these kids happy. <laughs> and then she did this where she gritted her teeth. and She goes, go get something to eat right now under her breath. So, I feel like and I was just, more and I was like, yeah, here. mama, tell him something. <laughs> and Manny put his head down. He went and got his Cheerios and his yogurt <laughs> and uh, we were good to go. Yeah. I was, I, she said that I ran to the thing. I was like, <laughs> no, and then she, she, <laughs> no, the, best, no like, court. the reason why, I mean, I woke up, I should have went to bed super early. Cause I took, I took NyQuil at 10 or at two o'clock in the morning. I don't know. I was taking up. day quality at two in the morning in the drive. And then, and then wo- Jerry woke me up at six. So I had no idea where I was like until probably noon. And then I was fine because I was like, what is going on? What is this world? <sighs> and in fairness, I did leave the show and go to the gas station and get him a monster and a Red Bull. So yeah, you did. You you hooked me up. Thank you so much. You knew I was like, I needed something. Yes. So the show was 8.30 to 3, but because of the weather, yes, she did, Mr. Hughes, yes, she did. But as a result of the weather, they extended it one hour to 4 o'clock. So you do the normal load-in, you get everything set up, you make last-minute adjustments, and then, Court, you want to talk about the scavenger hunt through your eyes, what you saw, and then me and Manny can put our uh, finishing touches on it because I know so- how hard you worked, and I thought it was flawless, and this was the best one yet, but... um. I'll let it, you give it. It a was a lot of fun. So the weather kind of screwed things up because a couple, a, a bunch of the vendors were late and um, one couldn't make it at all. And so I was a little nervous <laughs> at first that things were going to be not, not good. But I luckily the, I pulled the scavenger hunt things and I just stamped the ones for the person who wasn't going to be there because the second that the kids go, they, they take off and they're in the show and they will wander around looking for that last person who isn't there. And that sucks for the parents. And I don't want them to have like that experience where they're like, we spent this whole time and nobody told us this guy wasn't here. So, um, I, I like maybe the first like 10 kids, I didn't catch them, but everybody else, That scavenger hunt, we used to start it the second the show opened, but the kids were like, they would like line up at the booths while people were still trying to set up, like even before the show started, because some of them come with their parents who are vendors and it was, it it would get overwhelming. So now I, I keep the cards with me and then I set them out right at 9am when the, the scavenger hunt starts. This was the biggest one we have ever done. It was so, they had, so we had, it was also uh, B's first time having an athlete autographing uh, cards and stuff and and balls and whatever people wanted um, balls 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 or so he it was so Rodney Thomas from the Colts was there and uh, Brad generously donated a free autograph to be added into the tickets so we started out when we first started doing the scavenger hunt doing like slabs we would put slabs in them, like, you know, like maybe five to $10 slabs in each one of them. So we were spending hundreds of dollars on these, which was, we still spent, we probably spend more now because now I've switched over to sealed. We, I buy hobby boxes of all different sports, Pokemon. This time we did Star Wars, Garbage Pail Kids, racing. I had like uh, Mario Andretti cards. I don't like everything. I try to get like just as many hobby boxes of things. And then we keep, so that when you do the hobby boxes, you keep the hits in there. Uh, you could get autographs and relics. And so these kids are pulling like actual fire. I watched a kid pull a silver Zach Wilson uh, rookie card while he was standing at my, my booth. He was so excited. And then he also got the gold ticket so he could take it over and get it graded immediately with the SGC from TNT. So we started with the slabs. Then we, we switched over to the wax. And... When we did that, TNT Sports Cards, uh, shout out to them because those guys are just incredibly amazing. 
they started donating, uh, gold, we'll call them golden tickets. And they came up with the idea. They're like, oh, we should donate, you know, free grading. And I'm like, what if we make like little golden tickets like Willy Wonka and we put them in the prize packs and then like 10 kids could find them and you never know, you know, who's going to get it. And they were, they thought it was a great idea. We ran with it. We did 10 for two shows two shows in a row and this time they upped it to 20 so even more kids were winning these grading uh vouchers basically so when they did that i added eight eight uh coupons from reckless for actual hobby boxes in mystery packs of wax so of like sealed wax so i got like gift bags and i put uh hobby boxes inside of these and then taped it up so if they pulled one of those tickets they got a whole box of wax not just like packs or they got the free grading and then bees donated one free autograph. So they had, there was another ticket in there for that. So the amount of prizes, just like really good prizes in this scavenger hunt, like far exceeded any one that we had done before. And I was so excited for the hunt because Ludix joined They donated wax. So they were a new sponsor. We had uh, 12 different table sponsors. So these kids had to spread out and go to the whole show this time to make sure that they were hitting every corner of the, sh- of the show to find all the stamps, mm-hmm. um, you know, sports car machines, they always donate stuff too. So that, like, it's so nice the way this hunt has like really made this community come together. It's not just like a sponsored event where the kids show up and that's it. It is the entire community of ship Shawana collectors that have come together to make this hunt as big and fun and exciting as it is. And I cannot take credit for that because you you just you couldn't do it the same way if it wasn't for this group of people that does it with me. Um, so once that was all done, when I realized how bad the weather was, it was so I was like, we did all of this work and we're going to have all these amazing prizes and nobody's going to show up because the power's going out. The, the roads are terrible. Everything is so bad. And we had the most kids. I made 300 packs, guys, 300 packs. And I came home with none. None. Zero. Shout out, shout out to, to Amelia, who was on mommy duty, daddy duty, who stayed up late helping stuff packs yep. and then watched the girls at the hotel to make that happen. Yeah, because we couldn't have done it without her. She was tremendous. And I, it I, was just like a lot of like our whole family. You know what You know what I really like about it is our whole family puts in to make that happen. It is something that we do together. It's something we do TikToks about it, going up to the show. The kids get super into it. They help me pick the wax that we do. They help me print the cards. We go to, you know, Walmart and get the giant poster board. And they, like, it's exciting. And it's something, like, not only that I'm doing for the community that I care about, but that it's something that me and the kids do together. Yeah. Well, Steven, I, you got to give a shout out to Steven too, because he, when you were gone, he was handling he was, it. He was handling it. Cause Jeremy and I weren't going to do that. We didn't know what to do. So we would always be like, Steven, there's kids, Steven, there's kids. And he would go over there and he would get excited. Like if someone had a golden ticket, he would come over. Where's mom? Where's mom? Someone hit the wax. Someone hit the wax. Someone hit the golden ticket. And in my head, I was going to ask Courtney during this whole thing too, was, is it frowned upon if I trade some of my cards for these golden tickets that these guys are getting? <laughs> I trade a lot of cards. You might be able to. Like, great. Huh? You I might like, be able to. They probably would trade. I, I mean, they're trading. So at one point, I look over, and there's like four or five kids, right? They pulled – it was Chronicle WWE packs, right? And Jeremy's standing by, like, the pick-your-own-price cards, and they're like, hey, sir, would you trade this pack for this card? And Jeremy was like, yep. And then he's opening them like he's all getting excited to open them. So then they all they all saw Jeremy say yes. So now they're all picking cards. And Jeremy's like, yep, yep, yep. And you could just see Jeremy was excited about opening these wrestling packs. So he even got excited about the the kids trading with him. And then Manny got excited when I pulled some wrestler by the name of Nikita Lyons. And he said, that's the new too thick PC. Oh, yeah. She does. this. She's the one that does the splits. And you got excited. I got excited for how excited you got. It was nice to see you motivated by something outside of uh, a bowl of ravioli, my friend. That's messed up. That's messed up. So I, I want to say something that was really cool. Um, the the amount of people who go above and beyond to give more is I don't I don't have the words, man. It is truly special. 
And it, I think I remember from concept to the first time we did it to what it's turned into now, it's just a very surreal thing that people will come out of pocket money, time, energy, effort to help make it bigger and better. It's, uh, th it's wild to me. It's wild. There's people who have bills. There's people that, you know, barely have enough money to, to get by. And the fact that they're willing to give more to ensure that kids they might not even talk to have a good time is, is very, it's just, it's, it's pretty special. And it, like, it makes you feel proud. Like you hear, you hear community thrown around a lot. And I think sometimes people don't, they just say it like you truly feel it when you're here. It's, it's wild to have almost 200 tables of like-minded people ensuring that we're looking out for one another, that these kids are, are having a good time. And so like Courtney said, without them, none of this is possible. So all the praise, you know, to them. Now on a lighter note, I will tell you, that, you know, a couple of the kids who I felt like were working, some of the younger ones, when Courtney wasn't around, I let him sneak by without getting all the stamps. <laughs> no, he did, too. He was like, tell Steven they're allowed. And, yes. and it was like, they're missing a couple of stamps. And, yeah, I feel like, 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 to I, be I, fair, I, just so you know, I, all, I often let them go without the stamps if they're not all the way done. And I can tell they've been looking and looking. I'm like, just, you're fine. Come on. Well, like I, I, I was like some kind of staunch monster. You're like, no, you must have every stamp. Well, like, like the 19 year olds doing it, the ones with the Adam's apples, the beards that are like, I can't find this. I'm like, well, you're, you're going to have to work, man. You're going to yeah. have to go. Work. I like that the older kids do it. I, I like, I had someone say something to me at a different show about the older kids participating. And I'm like, what would you rather they be spending their time doing on a Saturday? No, no, I'm not talking about the older kids. I'm talking about the grown men trying to get. <laughs> they're teenagers no no i'm talking about the grown men trying to sneak in okay but then i was yeah. going like work mode i'm like i authorize this and i'm like i'm sure steven had no idea what the hell i was talking about but this is the first time ever normally the girls take it to the boys the boys the boys dominated this year there was a lot of girls that participated though like, no 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 but the, at every single one the girls have always absolutely wiped the floor with the boys I don't yeah, know. they always finish way first. The, 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 boys got always, like, the boys got together and said, not not this time. Not this <laughs> time. Not today. You're actually not wrong. Oh, I didn't bring my bracelet. Uh, one of the families that come, they were it actually made the feature like full page picture in the article I did. We I just love them. They're like the nicest people. Their daughter made me a bracelet and brought it to me as a gift. And I was just like blown away that she took the time to make me a present. So scavenger hunt was a success. You were actually thought that we were going to have too much and we left with absolutely nothing, which was wild because the night before you were like, ah, it's better to have it and not need it. So we cut more and made more. And then we're like, oh, we're going to have too much. 200 we tables, were... a lot of activity. I'm going to start with you, Manny. How did you do? What was, what was your thought? What was your feedback? Buy, sell, trade, the whole, the whole shebang. Give us a rundown, kid. So, this show is like the actual first time that I kind of traded in real life. I don't really trade as much. I just buy and sell. Um, and trading is really fun, but it's with particular people. Like I got to have a good persona when we talk. Uh, you know what I mean? Like just be friendly. Um, there's some times where I try to trade with someone. They're like, no, like short, short with me or not. But if you're willing to like, you know, have a conversation that, like, for example, I trade with Brett. We were talking soccer for like 10 minutes before he even initiated a trade. And uh, I, I like those kind of deals. I do want to say, and I don't know if you guys know this, because I know, Courtney, you're into the pop culture type of world. So, you know, those collectors, Jeremy, you're into like the basketball and you have a little bit of the soccer and you're you're just you you do a lot, a lot of everything. But I know Courtney's like kind of specify or is specific into pop culture with her stranger things. And I like soccer and starting to get into TCG, but the soccer community, like the actual community of soccer collectors are amazing. Like I don't, they're not trying to get up on one another. Um, they're everyone's trying to basically build your own collection. <laughs> that is true. I, I, I didn't know. <laughs> 
Matt does ask about trading. I don't know. I've never traded before, Matt, so maybe it's a new thing. I just tr tr did my first trade, bro broke my cherry, so I'm ready. Um, but, yeah, so every community. <laughs> we have the same face. It's, first of all, if you're going to say it like that, you got to say popped my cherry, not broke it. That, was, that sounded really gross. Just Hey, like same thing, right? No, it's much more vulgar the way you said it. No. Okay. I was like, ew. Immediate like ick. I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> Hell of a transition broke, from broke uh, children's scavenger hunt to Manny's cherry. I yeah, know. And, like, well, and I was like, trying broke to... your cherry. Nobody said. Uh, I'm trying to say the communities, uh, the, the two communities that I'm in right now, it's really great. Like, no respect to the basketball and football, but I just feel like no respect to them at all. Fuck those people. They're, they're trying to one up each other. They don't care about relationships. Like the tight knit group of soccer and TCG is a different story, and that, I think that's why I like the hobby a lot more. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> Manny, like he's like, I'm gonna take this opportunity to shit leave. on people who don't collect cards that I collect. <laughs> all right, so, so let me speak for Manny. Let me speak for Manny. Okay. My <laughs> perception of Manny's experience was trade night was so incredible. He moved the Mbappe, which had kind of had his collection kind of, I don't want to say stuck in a negative way, but it was Brad. Wonderful show, man. Well oh, done. The, hero, the king of the local hobby has entered the chat guys. Mr. Brad Beeman. Yeah. Absolute hero, legend, icon. Mm -hmm. Without <laughs> Brad Beeman, there is no ship Shawana. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Even though his daughter was doing way more work than he was, I'm just gonna <laughs> so just, shout out to his daughter. And hey, me and her were working. We were putting we, got, we were putting all the tables away, <laughs> talking loud enough for everybody to hear us. Just saying, we'll do it. We got it. <laughs> yeah. I think I like, that's established I, a community <laughs> we want to avoid. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to Gabs. Gabs was Gabs was crushing it. Oh my god, I laughed so hard I knocked my earbud out. <laughs> should I, while we have Brad in here, should I show him what I got at a card show? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's see it. Hold on. He's got to lift it, guys. It's heavy. <laughs> lift it with your don't lift it with your back, Manuel. Check this out, Brad. It's like a little kid. He's so proud of himself. So look at what I got, guys. Dude, I got. Oh, I'm gonna break something. Hold on. He's watching. So... Uh, -oh. uh, you're a real one, Brad. You're a real one. Yeah. So Manny had such an incredible show. By the end of the damn card show, he was buying framed autograph jerseys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Manny was on cloud nine. I have never seen Manny wheel and deal in the past. If Manny was into a card for a dollar, he would not let it go unless he got three dollars. This <laughs> he decided to be, pay it forward and throw some good karma out there. Manny was wheeling and dealing like I've never seen before. People would just say a number, and I'm pretty sure Manny had already made up his mind no matter what they say. Yep, deal, deal. He was so proud. Deal. I was so deal. proud of him. I probably I was like, oh my me how is growing up. I was like, if they offered your cards, I was like, deal, deal, deal. <laughs> you, know, I, you know what it is? Is I you seemed so much more confident this show than I've ever seen you at any other show. You were just you were like radiating confidence. Maybe you should take Nyquil more often before you go to card shows. Not Nyquil and I think it's I think it's months <laughs> of training and lessons learned and actually putting to action the things that he's learned. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I said deal so many times, Courtney, that one guy came up to Jeremy and asked for a price. Jeremy said no, walked away. He came back and said, asked me the same price on the same card, which was Jeremy. So I looked at Jeremy and I said, Would you do this? Still Jeremy, 20 bucks. Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy said it's still <laughs> <laughs> this, I have so much fun, guys. I like I left the show yesterday. And I left early because we had to go home and take, and I had to let the dogs out. And I was sad. I was like, oh, there's still an hour and a half left. I want to stay. And, and I, you know, after like how much of a nightmare the drive was out and the girls kind of being cranky and not getting a ton of sleep because I had to sleep in a hotel room with Lala who was farting all night. And then Manny not getting up in the morning. <laughs> so I was just like, what is going on? I, the feeling you get at a card show where you're just like with your people 
is uh, it's not like a lot of other things and I enjoy it. So this is a show that you can go to and you can have, you can spend the day going through dollar bins and walk away with monster cards because people have goodies packed in there everywhere. Mm-hmm. You can have, you can find five figure cards, you know, maybe a couple six figure cards. It's got everything in between. You jerseys. have signed jerseys. Yeah. Signed jerseys too. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, they just showed you had slab stocks. You had Aaron and, and his dad walking around. You had Ryan card collector two walking around. Jason yeah, Kuntz, Courtney walking around. Jason Koontz was there. I mean, we spent the first 40 minutes talking about Courtney. Yeah, yeah. But Courtney, is, are they in a book? I have my own sports card. Do they have their own sports card? No, I'll believe it. I'll believe it. When when I'm at PSA next week, I'll talk to Nat Courtney. If he authenticates it, it's a real sports card. If he says nah. Well, well I mean, they wouldn't do Ken Golden's right now. No. Well, they'll they, do mine. You know I'm what? Courtney, you want to know what was really cool about this show? Um, we kind of talked about it, and you could tell that our two thick fam, our, our thick loads are growing um, because the love and support that we got this show, we keep saying yeah. it like, since rock, Skyline. Rock, it's been kind of growing. But I'm standing next to Aaron talking to Aaron, and the guy comes up to me and is like, I love too thick. I love you guys. You guys are the best content. And I look at Aaron and I was like, ha ha, you got all those followers, but we got loyal ones. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, they filmed their, almost their whole show, their whole episode at our table with you guys. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what's wild is when I'm there, I'm like laser focused. Right. And so you have to make the most out of your time, which means like (laughs) transacting, doing deals. The minute somebody that you don't know comes up and daps it up, and like mention something about a specific episode i'm like all the money be damned this is awesome i just want to chop it up and like you know all the people that think cocaine bear is the greatest movie ever just shows me that there are some intelligent people out there in this crazy (laughs) world we live in there's someone there's there was like five people that came up to me and i never even met these people before well no and jerry and was like is Jeremy serious about this cocaine bear? Do I really need to go see this? And I was like, I haven't seen it, but he's he's on a different level about it. And then he would hear it, and all you would hear him say is cocaine. And I'm like, Jesus. No, no. To be clear, passenger hunt. to be clear, these people came up to me yelling cocaine, and I had to let everybody know that it's a movie and I had to drop the bear piece. Not talking yeah. about the drug, my friend. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're talking about the movie Martin Scorsese wishes he did. <laughs> No, it was, it was I, I got a little nervous when Courtney left because she's like the Courtney when she's behind the booth is like the jack of all trades. She could do everything. I can't do the kids. I wasn't able to do those kids repacks. I tried it. Um, I actually got a couple people because um, there were some at the end that didn't know about the uh, repack or the scavenger hunt. So I told them about it. They were excited. There was one guy in a, a messy Argentina jersey and he was pumped. Courtney, and you, this is you weren't here, so I wanted to tell you. He was pumped when he pulled the packs and he got soccer. Um, he's like, "Yes, yeah, soccer!" And I was like, "Yeah, you got the. Let's see if you could pull a Messi." And he's like pulling it with his mom. It was it was the best moment of. Uh, I could have done all the deals, but to see the kids actually smiling when they opened their packs, or how excited everyone was getting to get a golden ticket, which I wish I would have traded for because I have a lot of expenses through TNT. <laughs> So I, I, I would next time, if it's not frowned upon, I, if there's a golden ticket, have them come over. We'll do a trade. <laughs> so TNT being there was a big deal because you could drop off cards for submission. ISA grading being there was a big deal. I had a raw LeBron walk up to my table and I really wanted to buy it. But the auto just looked a little too bold for a rookie, for a rookie auto. So I suggested those said, Hey man, for you to maximize your ROI, you want to get this thing authenticated and graded. There was a spot over there. Why don't you go do that? So sure enough, like maybe half hour later, the guy came back and it was a reprint. But how cool is that, that, you know, there was a card we wanted and on site, there was something we could do to ensure where both parties were protected. You know, I, I thought of that. I probably should have done that with my card that I had, um, the Spencer Torkelson. Um, this is this is actually one of the mistakes I made. So I know people are listening. I've, I always tell my mistakes and I'm not perfect. 
I'm actually more imperfect than perfect when it comes to the sports card world. But I bought a Spencer Torkelson um, in person auto, thinking it was uh, a blue a blue auto. Um, that was uh, embarrassing. Uh, I turned it around. I I thought it was like you know the ones that are getting redeemed right now. Um, yeah. Heritage comes out with blue ink autos and red ink autos. And I was like, you know, a blue ink auto of Spencer Torkelson right now. We're in live in Michigan. It's pretty, it's going to be pretty good. You know, he showed it to me and I was like, don't buy that. And he's like, why? I'm like, I'm like, you have to get like, that needs to be authenticated before you buy it. And then I turn around and I was doing something else. And then he comes over. He's like, I bought it. And I'm like, why would you buy an in-person See, autograph? This is why he's our child, Courtney, because then he came to me after I didn't know he had already talked to you. And he came to me, he's like, Look what I got. And I'm like, uh, that's an aftermarket auto. And his that's face just sunk like as if like I was gonna tell him something different from you. Like, You're our grounded, kid, our kid, you are grounded. Our kids are the same thing. They're like, Mom said no, so I'm gonna go ask dad. And then dad says the same thing. And, exactly. <laughs> but I but it, you know, if you could get that DNA certified, it's it's it would be a legit card, but now you have to take it through DNA because it's aftermarket. And yeah. I like I have people come up to me all the time with like on card autos that they got in person. They're like, "Oh, I want three hundred dollars for this Larry Bird autograph," and I'm like, "Sir, you could have wrote that on there." I'm like, "Go get yeah. it graded, and then I'll buy it." You know, and so we we this was for <laughs> Reckless Cards specifically. This was our best show. And then even after like like and we talk about all like from everything the from the way we load the equipment to the way we store it to the way we set up to like what goes on what worked what didn't work this was the best one but then last night it bothered me because before the show even started Courtney moved um yeah I think that that's that's incredible Brad I think that helps make the show go and it it protects a lot of people and it just it's a value add we were talking I'm like for the life of me. We sold all that, all those cards before the show even started. You both look like zombies looking out the corners of your eyes reading the comments. <laughs> Sorry. Both of you. <laughs> I got ADD. <laughs> I, I, I was agreed. I like, we're like, uh, full disclosure. Both look like possessed. <laughs> I was hoping you didn't ask me a question because I was like, I didn't listen either. The, the Wait, Garrett, Garrett's over here to put it in the, I'm reading the paragraphs. I'm reading, I got to Yes, Garrett's put paragraphs. paragraphs in this, the comments. We have a we have already determined when Cage was on writing stuff that I get easily distracted by the comment section. <laughs> so we sold all that wax before the show even started to Hollister Sports Cards. Like that wax. Or um loose cards, singles. Yeah. Right. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me because what we've had great success is we just do a name your own price thing. So we had just singles out everywhere. And as long as it wasn't like a dollar for everything, we were just gonna say yeah cool man make some money off of us cleans up our spot i don't have to have the anxiety about it so today i was like i wonder why we sold so much but that didn't work out and then steven in the most steven manner is like somebody offered me to buy it all and we're like what did you say steven he's like i told him no <laughs> oh I mean, you did put them in charge. That's on you. You put them in charge of that. I did. I know. I the just, only person to blame for that situation is you, sir. Yeah, you're the leader. 100%. And I just simply said, like, well, if we're at a card show trying to sell cards, why would we say no to somebody that wants to buy cards, especially right after you just unloaded, like, 30 boxes of cards into somebody else's car? And then there was an awkward pause. And then, you know what? If that's the worst thing that happens in life, you're doing all right. <laughs> He was, he really enjoyed doing that. And I think he thought like at the next show, he'd be able to do it again. But if we sold, if he sold it all, he wouldn't be able to, um, he, he was really enjoy Like I was watching him like wheel and deal and get excited over making trades mm -hmm. and like he, he, he had a really good time doing that. And I think in his mind, if he sold all of that, then he wouldn't have anything else to do. See, so and I, that's why well, we like that as parents, like those are skills where it's like, it's not going to, it's a value that he'll learn that he'll be it'll be applicable later in life. And look, the no mistake really made maybe a couple of bucks. Who cares? But uh to Courtney's point, he was in his glory. 
he was absolutely in his glory. And so the show in itself, just to put, making all those kids smile and help educating our son with some real life application. That's a dub right there. Yeah. There yeah. You go. I mean, Steven's just like the normal, like when I worked in the factory, they do the same thing. They're not going to get it done right, right away. Cause then they might get laid off the next week. <laughs> worried about the next week. He needs a paycheck. Keep coming. You can't blame the guy. <laughs> I, yeah, think here's he, the thing. I think he ended up in that, like, those are like, you know, super value cards. I think he ended up making like 60 bucks selling oh. those. Jeremy gave him all that money. Really? That's awesome. He he did say, he was like, Manny, I'm in charge of this. I'm hoping to get, I'm hoping to get $100 worth of sales is what he said. And uh, he's counting as they're going. He's like, what did that, when he left, Jeremy did some trades and sold some out of that. He's like, where did that card go? How much did it go for, Manny? I'm like. I don't know. I don't know. He's like, oh, I was trying to keep track. Like, he, and then he, and then he was like trying to figure out. Oh, you traded this Odell Beckham card for what? And I said, your dad traded it for a pack of cards. He's like, oh, I was hoping to get some money out of that. Like, he was like, you could tell he was into it. So shout out, I like again, shout out to Steven. He, I that was probably my favorite part. Like the scavenger hunt was amazing. I love watching the kids, but watching Steven, like, I felt like he really, um, it was. It was, I really enjoyed watching him. This was like the most engaged he'd been in at a show that I've seen. Steven really like, it's, he loves like collecting cards and looking at them and stuff, but like really watching him, you know, make deals and think about like, are these two cards worth this card? It was, as I, I was very proud mm -hmm. in that moment. And that is like, Steven isn't like the kid that does that kind of stuff very often. So he's not like these kids with the Zion cases and he's more of like a Manny and like, he's more like <laughs> just like enjoying himself and not caring about the money as much. So it, it's true. I see. So like Manny, it, like, and Steven are so similar. <laughs> oh, that I was that is a compliment, Manny. I love my son. You can't take me saying that you were, you and my son remind each other of each other. You and you take that as a negative thing. That's like you're shitting on Steven. Why are you crying at me? <laughs> no, I messaged Amelia to come get him. I don't know what she's doing. Oh my! Talking to boys on text messages. Goodness, that was that was golden. You know, it's, that was good, man. But it, it did. You know what made me proud is like when he was in a situation where he had to make a decision, and he let the kid win. That is a pretty pretty like fantastic feeling. So, what was your favorite card that you saw? And then what was the, the card that got away? Like you couldn't get a deal done. Go ahead, Courtney. Oh, me? Yep. I didn't get to really see cards because I did. I told you I did the scavenger hunt the entire time. I saw no cards at all, basically the whole show. <laughs> so I, I, di I didn't. This was like the one show. The sca like Literally the scavenger hunt was nonstop. I, I did not get breaks from that, except for when I ran to get food for the kids. And... Or, or and go replace cards up at the front for more kids coming. I this I would say this is the first show where I I didn't really get to shop or see things. I was very diligent. So and I didn't realize that until you just asked me that question. I was like, honestly, I, I don't I didn't see any cards. <laughs> so I would say Jeremy, you saw the most because we had three, like three different mindsets going into it. You were buying, I was selling, and Courtney was in scavenger hunt and trying to he, basically do it all, right? Courtney was doing it all. She had her kids at the hotel she had to go deal with. So it's kind of nice to have three different mindsets in a card, like at, at one table doing all having the same experience at the end. But the one card that I saw that was pretty cool is a Jeremy Pena rookie um, out of five orange out of five it was bgs nine five i believe i know hell mary would have liked that but right now like you've told me is not the time to buy baseball um so i passed and it was hard to comp um he was asking for what it was on ebay and i can't do that because i told him if it was if it was a good deal this would have been already bought on ebay and he he kind of appreciated it um there was also an ichiro suzuki um Topped chrome. It was like the green border. I saw that and I wanted to buy it, but then I looked at it closely and it had a big indent in the back. And I was like, dang it, I really want 
an Ichiro rookie and the Albert Pujols Ichiro side by side green tops chrome. I think that would be like my next get. But those are the two cards I saw. Let, let me ask you this, Manny, since you had one, you probably your best show that you've ever had. Was it different being in a position where like you felt like the ball was bouncing your your way? You were flush with cash and you had the opportunity to buy. Did you catch yourself maybe over like wanting to be a little more aggressive than you normally would just as a result of being in that unique position? Yes. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to do like multiple deals. Um, I had the itch to walk around, but we didn't really have, it was so busy at our table the whole time, but yeah, I did. I got more confident the more money I had in my pocket could have been, could have been bad news. That's probably why I bought that Luca Jersey. Um, I wasn't going to buy it. Um, but you know, Luca's my favorite player and I was like, I'll buy it and put it up. And if I don't get the money, it's staying in my man cave. So it's one of those things where I'm okay to keep it. It's cool. I was, uh, I saw it. So I was actually picking up the, um, food for the girls and while I was sitting in the line at McDonald's for an eternity, I looked at Twitter and I saw that Jeremy had posted a picture of it on the Too Thick. And it was like, Manny buying more than just cards. And I saw the picture of it. And I was like, damn. Yeah. Because it, it is so dope. It, like, it, like, seeing it on the podcast and stuff, it does not, like, in person, how incredibly cool that – that that whole thing is and the framing is so well done the pictures because you didn't really hold it up but there's like a whole montage of like really cool like pictures on the bottom Mm -hmm. yeah i mean the custom framing is probably the three to four hundred dollars alone the jersey on fanatics is seven hundred dollars and i pretty much got it for what the cost of the jersey is so i was pretty pumped court you would have been you would have been happy at manny had been eyeing this erling holland card all day and he must have gone and looked at it like three or four times, had an idea of where the dealer was going to be. He leveraged his relationship with Tyler from TNT to go over and take a look at it before he bought it raw because he wanted to buy it raw and submit for grading. Now, is that not advancement was, in Manny's process? Man, Manny is, I like no joke. And I guess, like, to be clear, because uh, Hail Mary saying that I'm mean to Manny, I mean, like, watching Manny and Steven come into themselves has been a pleasure. Watching Manny's growth in, like, the year and a half that we've known him from where he started um, in, and where he is now is it, – it's incredible and it is something to be proud of. And, and like I see in Steven kind of that same, like wanting to grow, not just like, Oh, I want to buy this card cause it's cool. And I like the guy, but now like understanding, like if I buy this card, is this the right product to buy? Is this, you know, going to be valuable? Am I just buying this cause I like it and I want to keep it forever? Or am I buying this and it's actually something that's valuable and can turn into something bigger someday when I'm ready for it. So it was like watching Steven at the show trade into things and like actually care about value reminded me of Manny and where he's gone. Only, you know, Steven's Steven. So like it was, it was nice. It was good. I, I felt really excited and proud. You would have yeah. been even more proud. Steven made a best friend I, at the show. I so. know. You I've do. heard I heard all about Steven's best friend at the show. And yep. Manny wasn't Manny wasn't just excited to get a deal. He was excited that the other guy was excited. Yeah. Oh yeah, yes. I was. I didn't want to. I I didn't want. I want other people. To, you guys know me already. I want other people to be happy before me, which is a downfall by me. But it is. It's not. It, no, it, it is. is. It is not in that I situation. Do, I do before before I forget. Shout out to everyone. I guess I'm. You guys are the P. Will people, but everyone knows me now for the Frederico Chiesa because I was getting left and right. People were handing me Chiesas. This was Aaron from Slab Stock. He gave me this blue Chiesa. Hey, just, can I? It's Slab Stocks. No, just leave me alone. Let me say what I want. Everyone knew what it was. It's slab <laughs> Man, he's like, I've had a fucking enough of you. Yeah, I'm enough. that's enough. 
And then I got. And I'm sure you're gonna say Nationals too, right? Yeah, you're a, you're a hater. How about you go pick on someone? Make them cry. Yeah, make them cry. Sensitive, Charmin. We just spent 10, 15 minutes talking about how proud we were of you in the advance. No, 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 no. I was proud of you until this moment. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm hurt. Think on that when you go to sleep. That that won't bother me. I'll sleep. I, I might I'm actually text, get some good sleep. I'm gonna text Courtney and say I can't believe Jeremy's so mean to me. <laughs> no, she won't. She won't answer your message. <laughs> yes, I will. I love Manny. See. No, I would say that it's it's a unique spot, right, Manny? Because oftentimes you're at a show and you're either card rich and cash poor, cash rich without cards, or you think that you're both, but in reality you don't have the cash that you really need and the cards that you have aren't the kind of cards that you want to have, right? Like you start to, to learn what brands to avoid. Yep. This was truly from start to finish – the cards that we had were good and coveted. You had money, and I'm speaking to all of us. Throughout the whole thing, it was an it was an incredible show. I will say, even though I didn't want to buy baseball, the one card that got away was a Bobby Witt Topps Chrome Red Refractor numbered out of five. It was raw. I wanted it badly. I had the cash to buy it. The one kicker, and this is kind of a unique story. Somebody owed this dude money. And couldn't pay them, so they put up cards as collateral. So the guy was like, I would sell this. However, this guy owes me money. And so, kind of a unique story. Yeah, I mean, you would have I'm. You say it's bad that it got away, but you've told me your number one rule right now is not to buy baseball. Yeah, and I mean, it was like, I wanted it my number if I couldn't get it. Okay. No harm, no foul. I was going to say, what's the difference there? That's what I wanted. I was curious about. Yeah. I just, I felt like the guy was eager to sell and kind of gave off the vibes that, you know, he needed to move it. So, you know, long story short, this is a quarterly show. This was the first show that, what up, what up, Justin? This was the first show that we ever committed to that we were going to do. And when we started doing shows, it was four shows a year, right? Yeah. And it was this show, right? This was your first show? This is a ship Shawana. You want to talk about being spoiled? Ship Shawana was the first show we ever we ever set up at, okay. and um, we were always like card shop people. I met another kid while we were there who he like he's been collecting forever, but he never went to shows. He always just went to card shops, and that's kind of how we were. So um, it was crazy the first time we set up at uh, Ship Shawana, and then you go to other shows and you're just wildly disappointed. <laughs> I was like, oh, this isn't at all what i thought card shows were like no i i, I couldn't agree more i just yeah. the, the vibe is awesome the people are friendly it's got like that hometown feel but like a like a bigger environment like if you go to the bigger shows if you don't know anybody it's easy to just get lost in the shuffle here you can go table to table people are warm they'll shake hands they'll sit and chat with you it's uh it's truly an awesome show and We've told this story before on Hobby Night School. Ship Shawana was the first show we ever did. Almost 200 tables. You sell a ton of cards. You buy a ton. And you're like, oh, wow. Shows are easy. I can do $10,000, $15,000 every weekend. I'm going to quit my job and just do cards. And then the next show, we went to some like VFW out in the middle of nowhere and did like 100 bucks. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good one. I, I Before... Before the final recap, I do. You guys are busy this week, so I want to let the people know what, what the plans are for this week um, for the Reckless family. So tomorrow night or Tuesday morning, I'll be flying out to California to go to PSA. I'll spend a couple days at PSA. Hopefully, hopefully, You're I have, have a big card. A big card. Hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully, that will make my damn cool year. Card. And if not, I'm looking forward to meeting the folks out there, doing some networking, having a good time with some, you know, some better weather. Yep. I will fly home Thursday. I'll get home late Thursday night. Courtney, I will cuddle. She'll be big spoon. I'll be little spoon. I will take a nap. I will grab a coffee, and then Friday morning, I will drop her off at the airport. Will she'll be flying to Dallas? to attend the Dallas show this weekend and walk it 
and wheel and deal and hopefully buy some more Lucas. You also you also are gonna go see Manny, Manny watch and with Nat Turner is what I've heard, right? Yes, I'm gonna do that. I uh, I'm gonna hopefully link up with some of my friends. I talked to Jason Gillespie, he's gonna be there. Big he's dog. Going. Yeah, big dog. And uh, trading card chick, she's setting up. I talked to Christina, uh, Christina's PC. She said they live out there now, so I'm super stoked to get to see her pretty face. So it's just gonna, huh? We are so next level, Manny. We've already cut the first deal at Dallas. Yes, <laughs> I, I'm claiming that one too because he said it, and I text a deal, so that's yeah. my deal. That's yeah, funny. shout out to Extraordinary Cards, sold too early podcast. Slid into Dave's DMs earlier today and scooped up some heat. Yeah. Some heat. And he was like, oh, can you do cash at Dallas? And I was like, deal. And I'm like, I win. Yeah. This is my deal now because I said deal. I don't care that Jeremy started it. I finished it. And it I was, was the closer. He slid <laughs> a message and Courtney slid in and responded before. I'm like, I guess that's happening. <laughs> I mean, how many people remember Mariano Rivera? That's Courtney. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we've already cut the first deal at Dallas, so I can already tell you Dallas is lit. Yeah, I want to go. We've been sell selling a long time. I yeah. said, I had a long time. Yeah, and then we'll we'll come home. We'll do we'll walk. We're only going to be in Chicago for one day. We're going to walk the spectacular. Yeah. Then the following week is Lansing. Then the following week, Las Vegas. For the mint. When's the? Are you? Are we doing? I guess this is kind of off topic, maybe because I know a lot of people that go to Ship to go to this Midwest Monster. And a lot of people asked us to go to Midwest Monster when I was there. So I don't know. Are we gonna? Try I'm committed. To I'm committed in sat on Saturday the 18th to a daddy daughter dance. I gotta take little Kaya Bear and show her a good time, show her how she needs to be treated, and spend some time with the little Kaya Bear. But that Friday we're gonna walk it. Friday we're gonna it, we're gonna go to that. That's a sports card spectacular. Yeah, no, I'm talking about I'm talking about the Midwest Monster in Indianapolis. That's in July, right? June. June. A lot of people have got a hold and said that we should go to that. So it depends on the date. I haven't looked at the dates for that yet. I uh, we're doing we're also doing the Johnny Ford uh, show in May on the twentieth, and we're, then we're gonna do Shipshawana again that last weekend of May. So we're, we're pretty booked up. Mid, we're everywhere in Midwest, and then except Vegas, we're gonna party. And Courtney, actually, two things everywhere in mid Midwest. Courtney is national. So she's everywhere. Make sure you have your pen ready, Courtney, because there's going to be a lot of people that are trying to get your autograph on your new card at Dallas, I bet. Oh, yeah. I should shout that out. We are doing a giveaway, guys. Don't forget on Too Thick for a Basketball Card Fanatic magazine. If you are not – if you don't have a subscription to that, go to our page. And even if you do, if you have a subscription and you want to pay for it for a year, sh like slide into the – to our page on Instagram – like the post, follow Basketball Card Fanatic Magazine, follow us, and then share it. And on Wednesday night, I'm going to go live and give away an entire year's subscription to Basketball Card. That's like $120. Plus, second prize, I'm going to send one of the magazines, and I'm going to sign it. And that's a big deal because I'm not signing these magazines, guys. Just so you know, I don't like to, I don't like to sign stuff. So I will sign one. And it will get mailed out to somebody who's going to win it. And there are bounties because, like, Rob, sports card therapist, he's $100 for a completed signed one. Uh, Jeremy Lee's got $500 on one. Mm -hmm. um, so there's bounties on this. And and you need my signature. I have a nobody, but y'all need my signature to get that bounty. And I'm going to give one away with an autograph on it. An autograph? That sounds so stupid. <laughs> but, yeah. Courtney charges $100 per autograph. I don't get out of bed for $100. Calm down. <laughs> I charge $100 for Courtney to auto. Jeremy charges <laughs> a lot more, and Courtney charges the most. <laughs> but, all right. Well, Jeremy, did you want to wrap it up? No, I just I think the Shipshawana show is worth, worth attending. I, I encourage everybody to get out there and experience it one time. That's very kind. So uh, I got I got a super cute picture of him too. I'll send it to you, Brad. He was holding up a bees sticker and the card. He was the cutest thing. Everything about the show makes it awesome. And I know I give Brad a hard time about it not being close to a Starbucks. And shout out to him for making sure that there's coffee readily available. But if it wasn't for that drive, if it wasn't for the weather, 
if it wasn't for all of us being in the black, buying and selling cards, the experience and the story isn't nearly as fun. No, that is no. like, I'm, not, oh, I'm actually, I thought about it. I had like a moment of panic after the show with how busy that was. Could you imagine, can you imagine how, what May is going to be like? Court, on, a side has- note, on a side note, I just gave away a bunch of stuff to kids at the end because the mom went to pay for it because we said we took credit card. But when you left, you had the little, uh, the thing to swipe the credit card. Oh, that's okay. So, oh, and, and tease only for you people listening in at the 75 minute mark. There's going to be a merch drop. Not going to tell you anything more, but there is a merch drop that we're cooking on, and it's going to be so sweet. It will be. I'm pumped about it. So that's all I got. Courtney, anything? Make sure you follow Courtney at Reckless Cards. Yeah, follow Please. Reckless Cards. Go check out the giveaway. Uh, also, Dangerous Minds or Dangerous Games podcast. Okay, ever since Cousins called it Dangerous Minds, now I always do that. It's my own damn podcast. Dangerous Games podcast. Check it out. Give it a listen. I think it's pretty dope. All right. And with that, I hope everyone enjoyed their hobby release. Go see Cocaine Bear. Go see Cocaine Bear. We have a couple guests this week. Um, It's going to be a great one. Talk to you guys soon. It was Oz. You're right. Sorry. Matt Tone. The hell's Courtney with her hands.